What's up guys, it's Dakota from SND Entertainment and this is a new video series that I'm going to try out on my channel. Um, as I said in the last video, I love basketball. It's one of my, it is my favorite sport to play and I got on the topic of discussion with my girlfriend last week about uh, top teams in the NBA, you know, with the Golden State Warriors adding Kevin Durant to their already stacked starting lineup. Um, it made me think back to um, a time where there was other, you know, when this era of like super teams started. Um, and I got in the discussion with, uh, with my girlfriend about, you know, the Boston Celtics big three in Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce. And then you had Miami's big three with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. And then you have another LeBron big three in Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, and LeBron James. So I got on to the, the discussion, and I said in the, in the NBA, if all these teams could play together, I think the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics would meet in the finals, and then that would be between the best two teams. Now, she said that the Boston Celtics would win in a seven-game series, and I said the Miami Heat would win in a seven-game series. So I decided this would be a good idea to um, make a video about it, uh, see other people's... Um, what they would think would happen in a seven game series between the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. Now, I'm specifically going with the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics that won NBA championships in a full season. Now, I went with the 2007 2008 Boston Celtics who had Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Rajon Rondo, Kendrick Perkins, you know, all those guys on their roster. Um, I'm going to give some stats from the Boston Celtics. And just go over a few things that I that I found interesting about the team. Um, as far as stats between uh, the big three, Ray Allen averaged 17 and a half points per game, four rebounds, and three assists, while Kevin Garnett averaged close to 19 points and nine rebounds a game, and Paul Pierce just shy of 20 points, five rebounds, and four and a half assists a game. And then throwing in Rondo because Rondo was a big part and starting to come in as his own as a player. Uh, averaged 10 points, 4 rebounds, and 5 assists a game. Um, the Boston Celtics uh, had one of the best 3-point shooters in um, Ray Allen. I mean, that's a, another debate of its own, but I think Ray Allen is in the top 3 of just pure shooters in the NBA and definitely uh, one of the best 3-point shooters ever in the NBA. Um, two of the best players in their prime in Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, uh, people that have seen and heard stories of Kevin Garnett, the dude is an animal. He is probably one of the best power forwards to ever play in the NBA, and he's just he's just relentless. And Paul Pierce, the truth, you know, like we, one of the best shooting guards. I mean, at the time, guarantee he was a he was definitely a uh, a guy that you wanted on your on your roster, clutch player, just the killer instinct. Uh, to a lesser degree, I, I would compare him to Kobe Bryant. Not obviously exactly. I think Kobe would be a better player, but Paul Pierce is definitely up there as far as um, guys in 2000, the 2007-2008 season that I would want to play with and not against. Um, as far as the team together, they were 10th in offense, and they were first in the NBA in defense. Um, kind of shows you know that uh, tenacity that they could not only just – be a good offensive team you know Paul Pierce and Ray Allen being really really big offensive guys you know Ray Allen with the three-point shot again one of the best three-point shooters that the NBA has seen and Paul Pierce just being a, just a pure scorer um, you also have a uh, KG you know good on very good on both ends of the floor um, it just kind of shows that that 2007-2018 team wasn't just a culmination of good players you know, coming together and, you know, just being able to put up ridiculous amounts of points and not playing any defense. They really stress defense. And um, another thing I found interesting, uh, the, you know, the head coach in 2007-2008 for the Boston Celtics was Doc Rivers, uh, who I think is a top five coach in the NBA, you know, currently coaching in the NBA, if not one of, you know, top three, if not top five. Um, and then the uh, assistant coach who went on to coach the Chicago Bulls uh, when they made their playoff runs and when they had Derrick Rose and all that, uh, Tom Thibodeau. So that could explain where that defensive mindedness uh, came from. You know, really 
really good one-two punch, just not only on the floor with their big three, but also their coaching staff was really, really good and arguably probably one of the best coaching staffs uh, in recent years, or in recent years, I mean like in the past 10 years in the NBA. So that's kind of my breakdown of the uh, of the Boston Celtics. Um, you know, just a really, really good team. They had a really solid bench. Um, nothing that would, you know, not many guys that I would think would be in, like, starting lineups at the time for other teams or, you know, guys that, you know, strong six-man. But um, their bench, I don't think, was really all that deep. But it didn't matter because they were so defensive-minded. So it didn't matter if they didn't have the scoring power coming off the bench. It was really their defense that was kind of relentless. And that's what helped them, I believe, to a 66-16 record in their championship season, ultimately winning in the finals, I believe, against the Lakers that year. Um, now to move on to the Miami Heat. Um, obviously, LeBron James, probably one of the best athletes in the NBA now, easily. And Dwayne Wade, obviously, just a really good scorer, a really, really good player. At the you know in 2012 2013 season you know he's already won a championship he's just getting in the prime of his career so was LeBron so was Chris Bosh and it's just that big three was insane um, some stats Dwayne Wade uh, 21.2 points per game five rebounds five assists LeBron James putting up almost 27 points eight rebounds seven assists Chris Bosh close to 17 points seven rebounds two assists. Uh, Ray Allen, who ended up joining that Miami Heat team, winning another championship, uh, 11 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists a game coming off the bench. Um, as far as um, some things to know about the Miami Heat, they were a super efficient scoring team. Uh, as a team, they shot 54% uh, from for 2-point shooting and 40% for 3-point shooting. Now, it's probably not crazy because you see guys in the NBA now like Steph Curry and I think Clay Thompson, like Kyle Korver, um, I know uh, at least within the last two years, uh, those those guys can shoot like 40, 50 percent on their own. So like, you know, as a team, you know, whatever you're 30 or 40 percent shooting, you know, that we're used to that. But we're used to seeing it from one player, not just a team collectively shooting 40 or more percent from three point range. So that's just really kind of uh, crazy. To see like an entire 13, 14, whatever man roster putting up those kinds of percentages in a game that's obviously doesn't have as many possessions as it did years ago, but still a fast-paced game nonetheless. Um, as a team, they were second in offense and ninth in defense in the NBA, uh, kind of showing that um, that they weren't just an offensive powerhouse. They're also a uh, their defense wasn't something to kind of be a pushover it's not like they're winning games 130 whatever to 120 whatever you know they could win a game 110 to 80 or 90 you know it, those big those big uh blowout games you know they they could definitely put them away um so why do i think miami would win in a seven game series against the boston celtics well I think of it uh, through, you know, uh, in a seven-game series, because if they played one game, I think the Boston Celtics would win. If, they, if it was just a one-game playoff, you know, it was like, who's the best team? I think that the Boston Celtics would beat the Miami Heat. But I think of it through, you know, these players in their prime. You know, I think LeBron James just is better than Paul Pierce. As far as LeBron James is definitely a um, at this time uh, in the 2012-2013 season, he's definitely he's not a shoot first kind of guy. He's a he's a dribble penetrate guy. He's gonna bang in the paint with anybody. You know he'll go right up against Kevin Garnett. You know LeBron James should be a power forward on his size and weight anyway. The fact that he's a small forward is kind of unfair, but there's plenty of players who um, who are bigger than the position that they uh, normally play and it's just kind of like we got to deal with it aka Giannis Atacupo however you say his name playing point guard when he's like almost seven foot tall you know but you have LeBron James who is just a 
relentless guy on both ends of the floor. Uh, Dwayne Wade, pure, you know, just like Paul Pierce, just a pure scorer. You know, just a guy that plays with a lot of intensity on the floor. Definitely someone that commands the floor and knows knows how to play the game of basketball. You know, all these guys do, but Dwayne Wade is definitely up there as far as like basketball IQ. Chris Bosh, um, really, I think the key for him to win his matchup against Kevin Garnett is to be able to play that stretch four and like a Channing Fry kind of role that uh, he played for the Cavs uh, this past season. Um, if he can really knock down the three ball and knock down those shots from 15 plus feet out, I feel like he could just edge out Kevin Garnett in in that way. And by that, I mean like outscoring. I don't think Chris Bosh is going to out rebound KG by any means. The dude is just an animal. Um, and then really, it's going to come down to uh, I really think be an offensive game. I mean, the Celtics were first in defense. Um, in the 2007-2008 season, um, they did play against uh, LeBron James and his uh, Cleveland Cavaliers back then. Of course, not really having much help around him, and LeBron James still put up uh, pretty good numbers. And that was, again, entering the prime of his career, entering that time where it's win a championship now kind of mode. Um, I, I feel I feel as if with LeBron actually having some teammates around him, and you know this isn't 2012, 2013 Miami versus 2012, 2013 Boston Celtics. If you know Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, you know all those guys stayed on the team, I really think that if he took 2007, 2008 Boston Celtics and the 2012, 2013 Miami Heat had him play a seven game series, that the Miami Heat would win in seven games. And by no means would any of them be blowout games. I think each each game is going to be close. It's going to come down to the end of it. But ultimately, I think it comes to the stamina of LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. That dynamic duo versus Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. I feel like LeBron James and Dwayne Wade definitely have a uh, have a better uh, dynamic uh, between the two and can spread the floor can command the offense and just score buckets when the Miami Heat need to against a tough Boston Celtics defense. And I think it would be hard for Boston to keep up that intensity uh, throughout a seven-game series, even though I don't doubt that they could. Plus, I think Miami's bench is just a tad bit deeper on offense. And really, I think what it comes down to is uh, can Miami outscore the Boston defense? And that's where I kind of leave it up to other people's interpretations. I want to know what other people think. Uh, let me know um, something that I that I missed or something that I should have talked about. Um, I really wanted to focus on Miami, the Miami Heat's, you know, second in offense in the NBA. Um, I don't I don't remember who was behind them in uh, as far as offense. And then the Boston Celtics uh, being the number one uh, defensive team in the NBA. You know, really, really important stuff. Um, I, I obviously, you know, I'd say Miami in seven games in a tough seven-game series. It's not easy for either team, but I feel like Miami does win that series in seven. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know. Um, I, I always like uh, feedback. I like knowing where I might have missed something. But um, if you if you guys enjoyed the video, or if you um, if you want to see more stuff like this, I have a few other videos like this I want to do. I kind of like these uh, hypothetical uh, situations. Uh, I don't want to do just one games like who's gonna win in one game because I don't think that decides who's really the better team. And I think it's like a, a seven game series because like any any team can win one game, you know. But as far as winning like a seven game series and being consistently good enough to be another team that might be better than you or, you know, to be able to consistently beat a team, I think is a lot tougher and really proves who the best team is. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, make sure to leave a like and share the video if you enjoyed. Let me know uh, what you guys think, who would win in a seven game series, what teams I should do next. Um... Yeah, and then uh, I'll be coming out with a another video soon. 
uh, doing some more research, trying to uh, trying to figure out what team uh, or what next uh, matchup to go with. So then I'll see you guys later.